Hans Lenz. In this video, we're going to learn about registering a domain name. Why do we need to do that? If you want to put your website live on the web, you need to get it an address, and that's what a domain name is. And is this the, like one of the first things that you need to do? Well, yes. If you're looking to put up a site for your small business or a new small business or your project, I would suggest the first thing to do is to register the domain so that you know uh, that it's locked up because then the name of the site, the domain name of the site, will be can be incorporated into the design of your website. Once you register it, like you said, does that mean it's yours? Yes, it is yours. It's almost like copywriting. As long as you keep, you got to renew it every year, but fortunately, most domains can be renewed for under $10 per year, so it's pretty affordable. That's great. So just to be clear, a domain name is the unique address of a website on the web. So for example, killersites.com is a domain name. Killerphp.com is a domain name. So they could be like hanslearns.com? Hanslearns.com is a domain name as well. Mm. Google.com is a domain name. These mm. are all domain names, they're all legitimate. And uh, they could be .com, it could be .net, it could be .info, it could be .ca. These are all different types of d domain names. They're called well, extensions. And they're just different addresses, that's all they are. Address, like a house? Exactly like the house. So let's actually just register a domain for you. Yeah. And, and from there, we'll, we'll learn a bit more about domain names. Fantastic. There are many places on the web you can go to register a domain name. And there's a small fee. And this fee basically covers the cost of just maintaining this giant address book of domain names. So companies like KillerSites.com and many other registrars, that's what they're called, companies that allow you to register domain names are called registrars. They just allow you to register your domain name and add them to this giant address book that maintains all these domain names. There's only one book? Exactly. And uh, you have all these different companies that help you to, uh, to register them. And you pay a small fee per year just to keep this database up to date. So there's only one killer sites that come, exactly. for example. Exactly. I should point out, killersites.com would be a different address from killersites.net. Why? Because it's considered a different address, just like you know, 784 Baker Street is different from 784 Wall Street. Right, those Wall Street crooks. So what we're going to do now is we're going to, uh, well, if you go to KillerSites.com, you click on web hosting, we have our web hosting guide where you can read more about domain names and registering domain names. Lots of questions there. So uh, I'll let you explore that on your own time. So let's actually click through. If you click through here, domain name, just you click through and you'll be able to get to hosting.killersites.com. And again, you can go to any registrar you want. So we'll just use this for now. So what's the name of the site you want to register? Well, I like headphones. In fact, I'm wearing some right now. So I, I would say that I'm a headphone guy or a headphone dude. So maybe something like that. So headphoneguy.com. All yeah, right. So yeah. we, have, we have options. We have the .com here, and we have several other domain name extensions. Yeah, so many of them. Just like if you remember in my basic HTML video, I talked about file name extensions like .txt or .html. Same thing with domain names. You have extensions. You got .com, .co, .net. These are all essentially different addresses. Like I said, you could register headphoneguide.com, which would be a different address from headphoneguide.co or .net. How come everybody's always talking about dot coms? Dot com was the first publicly available domains that you could buy. In the past. In the past. In the past there was dot com. The first three were dot com, dot net, and dot org. Oh uh, yeah, I've heard of that. Now there used to be all kinds of restrictions. In in the old days, if you were a dot com, you were a company. If you were a .org, you were a non-profit organization. No money. 
And if you were a .NET, you were a network. It was uh, an ISP, uh, Internet Service Provider, and stuff like that. I, I forget exactly, to be honest. It's been such a long time. Anyway, that's ancient history. There are many other domain name extensions that you can register now, .co, .info, and... Are you saying that it doesn't matter what, what you choose? These days, it doesn't really matter, although the preferred one is still the .com. Right. But it doesn't have any advantages in terms of the search engines, in terms of the traffic. It's just most people, when you hear a name, like Headphone Guy, the first thing they'll think is .com. It just sounds good. Exactly. But you know what? How many times do you actually type out a domain name? Usually you click to it through a link, right? Yeah. So it doesn't really matter if it's .info, .net, etc. Before we go on, I just want to point out, there are something called country codes. Country codes? Yeah. So it's so like .fr is for France, the country France, and then you have .ca, which is for Canada. Those crazy Canadians. Then there's .us, which is for the U.S. Right. Now, sometimes you can register a country code, and you don't have to be living in that country. Other times, you have to be. So, for instance, for .ca, you need to have a Canadian address. You need to be in Canada. Exactly. But for other country codes, like .tv, it's for some small country. I forget what it is, but they allow foreigners to register. That TV is a country? Exactly. I forget which one. It could Tas Tasmania or something. I don't, I, I don't know what it is. There's, there's a devil that lives there. So what we're going to do for you is we're going to try to register the home, headphoneguy.com. Okay, let's try it. So it's uh, first we have to do, so we type it in, we right. select .com, and then we hit search. So now it's going to check the database to see if it's taken or not. If it's taken? Oh, you mean like if I ask a girl on a date... And I need to know if she's taken? So if the domain name is taken, yeah. you have a couple options. You can choose one of these alternate extensions, or you could go for another name. Well, it looks like it's taken. Well, the .com is taken. Oh, that right? happens to me all the time. But these extensions are available. So that means headphoneguy.net is available, .biz, .mobi, etc. Right, but... So, but what if I pick headphoneguy.net? Isn't the original headphone guy going to be upset about it? Well, he might be upset about it, but he, he can't do anything about it because it's a totally different domain name. I see. Because it's got a different extension. So, what I think you should do is maybe try another domain name that's similar with a .com. Right, so forget about this one. And maybe think about another one. There's other fish in the sea. So what do you have in mind? Okay, well, let's see. That I like headphones, and I'm a man. So if headphoneguy.com is not there, what about headphonedude.com? Yeah. So let's try it out. Yeah. I like that one. So now we hit search again. We hit, the system's going to search the database to see if it's, if it's available. It's probably taken. So, congratulations, it's actually available. What? It's there? I can't believe it. 